All right, so here we're going to change out the contactor. So normally what you would do is you take a picture of the contactor so that you can make sure that you match up all the wires. So Eric's going to take a picture of the contactor, all right, so he can make sure that he has something before he pulls off any wires. Now we've disconnected power, so at L1, L2, there's no power because we've shut off the disconnect over there. But the air handler's still running, so he still has 24 volts here, so you've got to walk over there and turn off the breaker. And when we hear the air handler kick off, we know that we don't have any more power. And we'll double check that with a meter. All right, air handler kicked off. So more than likely we got it off. Go ahead and get his meter set up for him right there. Hand him his meter. Check L1, L2 to make sure you got the line voltage disconnected. And then check where I checked between the common and the R to make sure that the low voltage has also been disconnected. You can do it right on the screw terminal first. L1, L2. No power? Nope. All right, so now I'll check it at the common, which is blue, and the red up here, the only one that's not insulated on the board. No power? Nope. Zero power? Okay, you can go ahead and start pulling off that, that contactor. So there's two screws, and I've given you the long extension where this is where the long one comes in handy. The short one would work too, but this one's also magnetic, so you should be able to pull those screws out. I'm going to come around on this side. Should be one right here. That's it right there. So now he's removing the two L1, L2 off the bottom of the contactor. Now the black ones on the bottom don't really matter. He can put, when he puts them back, one on one side, one on the other, or exactly back the same way. Only thing that matters is if you notice, he's got two reds on the right, red on the right, R's red, R right, all right, so he can leave that, and then he's got two blacks on the left, and he's going to replace the two blacks on the side that is uh, non-contacted. It's a straight through shot from one side of that contactor on that pole. It's just a single pole contactor. Needle nose are good. Grabbing the needle nose back there too. Yep, makes it a little easier to pull those leads off. So there's the old contactor, and if this what happened here on this coil, that coil opened. All right, so something happened to that coil where it opened up. Uh, if you want, while he's putting the new contactor in, right, go grab the meter, set the meter on ohms, and let's ohm out this one right here. Ohms, 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 that's amps. Ohms, the symbol for ohm, show them. Okay, all right, so now measure across here, across the coil. Open link. Open link. Move that wire so we can see. Open link. Yeah. So no contact. Supposed to have. Let's see this one right here real quick. Hold on. You already got it in. Yeah, here I'll pull it back up. So any resistance reading would be good. And it's it's got probably a pretty high resistance reading because it's reading the whole wrap of the coil from one side to the other. So read across that coil. And it might even beep. So we got about 18 ohms. So that's, you know, 18 ohms of resistance. So the other one's open. That's why this one's bad. It wouldn't pull down. It wouldn't energize the magnet to pull down. And I got a little slide that shows a side view cutaway of this and how it operates. But there's two circuits here. One circuit's the control circuit, the coil. That's the 24 volts. 
and he had to shut off the air handler before he could remove this because the 24 volts is not with that disconnect on the condensing unit. It's upstairs. And then the other part was this circuit here, L1, L2. If you see L1, there's no break. It goes directly with a bar to the other side, to T1. All right, and then L2 had the set of contacts. So there's another contactor that has two poles. They break both sides, uh, but most of them are now just single pole contactors. All right, 24 volt coil for your AC unit. And depending on like this one here, this is probably rated for uh, 30 amps, 30 amp contactor. Some of the contactors are a little bit beefier. Uh, they're about 60 amp contactors. Those are for bigger units, bigger amounts of electricity. So he's placing the wires back in. He's got the contactor reinstalled, screwed in, and he's getting the. Uh, let's see if I can get an area here where you're at. He's putting both the terminals back on. He's got both reds. He's gonna put the control circuit back together. All right, so that's it. He's got it all back installed. He's got the connections down here looking pretty good. All right, and then the ones over here, yellow is good, red on the right. And I'll show you later how we could, if he lost the, the wires, the placement of the wires, how we can find out what wires go where, matching it up with a wiring diagram. All right, and then also we got all the control wires here. Now, while we got the control wires pulled off, that extra one there, cut the bare part off and then just wrap it around the wire so we don't have any bare wire. And then you can go ahead and we'll kick the power back on. Go ahead and turn the power on to your air handler. Let's see the meter again. And go ahead at the meter. And measure amperage while it starts up. Amperage. All right, oh, I heard something pull in. That's a good sign. So we'll do a total amp draw on the unit when it starts up. You'll see it start out with lock rotor amps, and then it'll, so it'll be a real high number. And then as the unit gets running, it'll drop back down. So somebody go ahead and hit that disconnect up there. All right, so yeah, it was like 52, and then it dropped down, and then as the compressor gets pumping, uh, it'll fluctuate a little bit until it evens out. So bad contactor, open coil, all right, that's it. And then we'll go ahead and we'll also measure voltage. Again, set it back up to volts. 
Measure L1, L2, measure T1, T2, and those numbers should be the same. If they're different, might have some bad pits on that contact. It's brand new, so. L1, L2, L1, L2. What are you reading? 211. Okay, up the top. 211, 211, 211 is good. So what I was talking about is if you get those pits in the contactor, if you want to test that, put one down at the bottom, one up at the top, and there should be zero. Now if it was pitted, that number would be like a one, two, or three. All right, and once it gets, like I said, five volts, all right, plus or minus 10%, then I would replace that contactor. So that's it for the contactor.